Hello and welcome again to Casual Magic. Today I just want to give a really quick update for the spring work event that we had. This time we decided not to do a draft in order to make it a little bit more uh, open to some of our uh, workers' children. We decided to have a two-headed giant event and try to pair people up by a group who were kind of more knowledgeable about what they were doing and then more rookie people who didn't know what they were doing and try to make it as balanced as possible. Uh, at least for our event at the store it wasn't four packs per person it was three packs per person and then one and a half prize support and then we got additional prize support. And as I've said in my previous videos we do this where the employees themselves or in this case the child like one child of an employee is actually paid for by the company and then any additional guests they'll just have to pay the regular ten dollar entrance fee but if you have the opportunity to try and have some sort of work sponsored magic event I highly encourage you do it because it can be a lot of fun now as far as our packs go I'll just start flipping through cards and I'll tell you the story so I'm busy with the list. They basically gave me the list and they said, okay, these are all the people who are going to be um, in this event. This is what we're doing. We're just rolling a die and figuring out who's who. So this person is number three, this person is number five, and then on the other list, this person's number four, this person's number two. And we ended up uh, partnering people up and then had to go ahead and uh, write up the list and give it to the uh, store clerk. So we did that about the time that we got uh, the packs. And so I'm busy writing out the list and the uh, the kid that I was playing with he said, oh okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open the pack. Or I'm, I th And I thought he said, I'm gonna go ahead and open my packs. And I just thought, okay, yeah, sure. So he uh, he started opening packs. I went up to the front of the store gave the list, dude started entering it into the computer, okay we'll be ready to go in probably you know five minutes, okay great. I get back to the table, the uh, the kid had a pack, or a, not a pack, a pile of red and blue cards and he said I'm playing red and green, or <laughs> like to that right, I'm playing red and blue, I always play red and blue, um, I guess you're you're playing something else and then all the other leftover cards were there and there were no unopened packs. He opened all six packs so how am I supposed to know which ones are mine and which ones are his? And then to top it off he was one of the three people at the event who opened up an Amiket invocation and it wasn't huge it was just stifle so I was like oh okay yeah that's uh, good that's a like $27 card I guess but you know okay and then there's another kid at another table he actually opened up the end-all be-all force of will and you know some were happy some were not so happy but you know hey at least I was happy in a way that someone at our event uh, got an invocation in this case we had two open up during the uh, opening of the packs so anyways our first match goes along uh, I do my best to make a uh, three color deck with kind of all the leftover pieces um, trying to get uh, a zombie tribal with a little bit of green in there for support and I got a lot of work out of uh, Soul Stinger here. Now the cool thing about him is uh, when it enters the battlefield you put two minus one minus one counters on target creature you control and then when it dies, you may put a minus one minus one counter on target creature for each plus or minus one minus one counter on Soul Stinger. But what I did with him more than once, I would just put the two other counters on something else I didn't care. So it would turn a one three creature that I didn't care about anymore into a zero one wall. And then meanwhile, he's a four or five out on the field that not much really could match up against very well. There were some angels that would come out. There was um, uh, which one was it? The green one. Colossipede. 5-5. Five, five. I mean, it's it's generic, but there's not, aside from maybe the god cards, there's not a whole lot in this set that is really, really big. 
So actually getting something with four power proved to be pretty advantageous. The other thing that we did a lot was uh, use spells to the absolute best of our advantage to try and somehow make it by. So the first game was fairly evenly matched and in the end we just barely lost, but it was fun. Second match we played against some uh, guys that got out a lot of creatures fairly early on and one of the other cards that we had in in the deck was uh, this one, Sweltering Suns, where you can do three damage to each creature. And we did that and it pretty much wiped their board and then I used another uh, combat trick at some point where I untapped I think a 4-4 flyer to go against that Colossipede. Uh, gave it plus two plus two until end of turn or I un untapped it, gave it plus two plus two and lifelink until the end of turn so suddenly my dude was a 6-6 six, six. Uh, his dude died, we gained six life and they're not really left with much of anything. So meanwhile, we have big huge things that survived the uh, three points of damage. They've got pretty much nothing, and now since I did a little combat trick and blew up the other thing, then we're rolling at that point. They start drawing lands, and they just kind of look at each other like, yeah, you want to call it? And they're like, yep, okay, we concede. And somehow we blew through that game in maybe 10 minutes. I mean, it just went so fast. I I swear we were on probably like turn 7 or turn 8, so things were looking up. And again, the kid I'm partnered up with says, hey, after this game, I'm going to sell this card to you for $27. It's just like, dude, we, we still have a game, so just just calm down. So the third game, we got matched up with uh, some people that didn't necessarily have the strongest decks and we were playing fairly aggressive, had things under control and then they got out and I don't remember the name of the card but it's the green enchantment that costs six and two green and creatures with flying cannot attack you and at the end of your end step you put out a 5-5 five five worm token at that point I knew we were dead. Flat out. <laughs> There's no enchantment removal that I had, nothing to get rid of a target permanent. And so basically I just thought, okay, well rather than just immediately give up, you know, hey, I'm here to play magic. So I'm just gonna hang out and see how long we can go. And I at least got rid of a few of the worm tokens. One was kind of funny because they they uh, pumped it up with other spells and it was just like okay well cool alright you know return attacking creature to its owner's hand and just made him waste mana for nothing so at least I kinda had fun with them but realistically there was absolutely nothing we could do about that we didn't have any card to uh, help out and even earlier in the game it was funny because when things were really going in our hand uh, or in our uh, under our control uh, the kid wanted to uh, play a creature and I told him no don't I said, you'll uh, you'll play this card. And he's like, yeah, but I need to get out a creature right now because I have enough mountains to do it, or enough red to do it. And I said, no, you will play this card. <laughs> you will undo my restraints and you will leave your blaster on the floor. That kind of Jedi mind trick. <laughs> so I told him, you will play this card. And he played the one where damage couldn't be prevented and damage was doubled. And then we played the uh, Sweltering Suns, so that way it did three points of damage, doubled it, it became six points of damage to everything, and basically was a board wipe. And then he's like, yeah, but, you know, now we don't have a creature. It's like, I know, game kind of starts over, so let's take our chances since things really weren't working out for us before. And then we quickly got the upper hand because I had been holding back on creatures, and he still had one that I told him to hang off on. And we just quickly, quickly got ahead. But then once that enchantment came out, uh, we were pretty much done. So time went on. And out of the blue, he just said, okay. And, and I'll just use, you know, this card as an example. Just out of the blue, he just goes, okay, after this game, I'm going to sell this to you for $27. And the guy sitting across from me in that seat, 
he said, hey, what's that shiny thing in his hand? And I said, oh, it's one of the invocations, um, stifle. Wait, hang on a second. And I looked at my partner's hand since I'd been helping him uh, make decisions for cards, and he's he's over here. So I look at his hand. I count the number of cards, and those look to be the exact same number of cards that we just had. It was our opponent's turn, so he shouldn't have drawn a card. So I don't know if this means that he just like top decked this card and looked at it, or he just rifled through his deck to find it while I wasn't looking at it. And then meanwhile, he's just trying to sell it to me mid-game, or at least advertise it. And so basically I just took it, put it on top of his deck, shuffled his deck, slammed it down, said leave that there, and then apologized to my uh, coworker across the table from me. Because you should never do that in a game. Even if it's casual, it's rude. So we finished up the game, and granted, you know, we're supposed to have three rares and three rares based on our uh, packs. And another guy that I played with, uh, he said, you know, oh yeah, after the game, or, or before the uh, games got started, after I opened up my packs, I took a picture of my cards. That way at least I knew what I had, and I just, you know, really only kind of care about the rares and uncommons. But at least I had that picture, and I'm like, that's a good idea, I wish I could have had an opportunity to do that. So in case you play something like Two-Headed Giant where you mix your cards, take a picture of your cards. It'll help arguments later on. So anyways, the uh, the rares weren't necessarily that great. The one that I did really want was Sweltering Suns, and I was like, well, you know, out of these six rares, um, there's kind of really only one card that I want, and then he said, oh, well, I'm taking this, and and he just took the Sweltering Suns. No no discussion, anything else. He, he just grabbed it and put it in his pile. And he's like, okay. He's like, and, th and that, and you can just have the rest. And I said, all right, so what do you want? He's like, $27, and I'm going to sell you this card. And I said, that's unacceptable, because I know for a fact that I saw this thing on eBay uh, for less than that. Like, It's more like 22 He's like, no, I, I asked the store guy, he said $27, and, and that, that website said 27 I was like, that was one of the prices. 24 was TCG Mid, so it's technically lower than that. So it's going to cost you a little bit more. So number one, um, I want uh, another one of these uh, red rares, and then... Uh, or, or then he says, he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll throw in one of these red rares for you. I was like, okay, well, that's close, but I need more. I also want this. And he's like, uh, well, uh, and I was like, that's it, $27 right now, take it or leave it. And he's like, oh, okay, well, show me the money. And I gave him the stack of money. And he's like, okay, let me count it. 20, 5, 1, 1, $27. Nice doing business with you, sir. And boom, got the card, he took off. And then uh, the other guy uh, who was sitting at the table, he had a trade binder and he was just like constantly pushing me because he wanted my Japanese Tolarian Academy. And I was like, yeah, there's just so much in your trade binder that I don't want because I already have it. But, uh, oh, Smuggler's Copter. Well, yeah, I, I guess I don't have one of those. And I just kind of thought to myself, well, that's kind of bottomed out at two something. Sweltering Suns is new. Uh, it's you know two, let's say like two seventy seven today. So, eh, what the hell? Trade for it because this will probably decrease in price eventually, just due to price erosion as more sets get open. So, in the end, my Sweltering Suns that I did have, I traded for a uh, Smuggler's Copter, which in a way is kind of rare because I don't really trade hardly ever. The other thing that was fun for our employees, uh, we did price support of one pack per win. So in this case, I got a pack for getting one win out of the three, and then we had additional price support. So for each one of our employees slash children that were covered by the employee fees, they got four additional packs. So in this case, everything that you see here, I got free because this is a work-sponsored event. Now, as a side note, I have to ask you, personally speaking, is this okay? 
because I feel kind of conflicted about this card. I mean, it's not necessarily like I needed Stifle, you know? I mean, let me try and focus on it here. Pretty. It wasn't necessarily like I needed Stifle. Like, oh my god, I absolutely have to have Stifle for some sort of deck, or oh, I really, really need an Invocation because that font is just trippy. I didn't need the card, but in a way... It was mixed feelings of, I've been so annoyed by my uh, partner at this event that I I'm sick and tired of hearing about this card, so I just want it, and that way I don't have to hear about it ever again. And two, in a way, I, I felt like he was um, kind of being such a bad player that part of me didn't really want him to have the card. And I know that doesn't necessarily sound good, but that's still what I felt. And that's why I, I have mixed feelings about this card. I mean, it's like, oh yeah, it's cool to have it, but in a way, it's just kind of... It wasn't fun to earn this card. I'll say that. So that, that piece of the story, you know, I'm just kind of curious what your feelings are. So anyways, uh, that, that part... And, and the crazy thing is, this could have been one in one of my three packs at the beginning, when I opened up all the cards. Except I didn't open up any, my partner opened up all six. So, technically speaking, if I would have been at the table and not uh, filling out forms to get all the names on the thing and have my kid just blatantly open up everything while I wasn't there, this could have been mine for free. I don't know. It was in one of the six packs. So, this could have been free, this could have been $27 like it ended up being in real life. I don't know. But basically, that's the haul that came from it, and out of pocket in this case, yeah, there's this, so I'll just set that over the side. But everything else you see here, I basically got free because of the work event. So, that's it for this time. Again, if you can have a work event, I highly encourage that you'd have one because they're a lot of fun. They're excellent team building exercises. They help you meet new people and they're generally speaking just a, a good time um, really for uh, some camaraderie and breaking the ice. So I'd love to hear your questions or comments about uh, workplace magic events and until next time, good luck. Is this okay?